right, well, welcome to the hail research study. This is our very unimpressive looking hail simulator, if you haven't seen it. All it is is like the old fashioned mine sweeper that they put in front of the tank. And the way we came to that was Ralph Lang's group out of uh, Vegreville and Inotech had a technician, Ron, Rod, who was doing work for AFSC, trying to train hail adjusters. So they would simulate hail by all different crazy ways. They would go out there literally with scissors and cut stuff, cut stems. They would throw rocks at it. And there has been other uh, <laughs> facilities um, that have tried to study hail and crops down in the corn belt, because it's kind of a big issue there. So they would do projectile, like fancy ice machines but it was really kind of terrible when you looked at it. It's literally like a, a gun that shot ice out at the crop. So how do you do that evenly? Now, the reason we got interested in this is, first of all, Alberta is the hail capital of North America. Last year, we broke records with hail claims, over $500 million in claims. It's a big deal. And it's also something that we really don't know a lot about. So what do you do with a crop that has hail damage? And there's, there, believe it or not, there's lots of products out there that are even have label claims to help the crop uh, be rescued from, from a hail damage. Have you guys heard of those? Any products? Name a couple for me, if you don't mind. Hey? Relief. Relief, that's an Omex product, right? Yep. So Alpine has one, and that's actually what we used in, in this project, and the wheat in particular. That's a Alpine G22. There's um, a whole multitude of them. We're also interested in fungicides as well. So if you have a, a, a damaged crop, is you know the, the logic behind it is you've got this damaged tissue, is it going to now be susceptible to any uh, saprophytic diseases and such? Uh, beans, it's pretty interesting because they like to spray uh, copper fungicide anyway. So on our bean trial, we did use parasol on that, which is actually a bacteria side. The Pulse Commission was the first group that uh, sort of stepped up to the plate on this project, mostly because there's a lot of great anecdotal stories out there. You know, big fish stories, to be honest with you. And it was in particular to a specific fungicide a, um, headline. And so tons of stories are hearing this from farmers. If we spray a headline right after a hail event that we're seeing this recuperative effect and like literally double the yields and you know whenever you hear something too good to be true it you know it usually is but then nonetheless they trusted us and invested in, and we were able to uh, develop the simulator in the first year of the study and the reason we came to the simulator was because remember oh rod he's throwing pebbles at the crop well he kind of decided he's going to take a dog chain and just went on there beat it up with a dog chain literally the chain you guys would walk a dog with and we're pretty lazy. If you, we actually went out there and tried it, it's pretty, pretty uh, vigorous and, and uh, kind of fat. So we decided to mechanize it and it's literally just a bolt on to our front end loader. So it does a really good job at simulating hail. We had to make sure we have the RPMs at the right place because we don't want to mow it down like a flail mower. We want to beat it and the chain links are round. And uh, when we brought in the hail adjusters after beating it up, we, they were like, yeah, this, pretty much looks like a hailstorm. They couldn't honestly tell the difference. So after that, we built two more of them. We're partnered with Ralph in Vegreville and then another group called Sarda up in Falaire. And we're studying not just wheat, but uh, canola is uh, just mostly a study looking at the ability of canola to recover. So lots of different staging and different hail amounts. On these ones and wheat in particular, we're looking at the rescue products. So I mentioned, uh, the rescue products, so for wheat we went with G22. For the fungicide we went with Presaro. Uh, we wanted to have something with some activity on, on Fusarium head blight. And we kept it simple. This is uh, in the scientific world a three by three by three factorial arrangement. So three timings. The first one is sort of earlier growth stage tillering. Second one is just head emergence. And the third one is is basically flowering. So those are the timings of the hail events. Then we did three damage levels. First is a check, second is sort of a light damage, third is a heavy damage. And then the other three factors were the, the treatments, Alpine G22 and, and um, Procero. So what we found so far, and this is the second year now of this study, I think we'll probably take a bit of a walk through here. After every hail event, so the early timing for this one was June 12th, 
This was uh, seeded, I think, April 20th. I gotta double check that. April 20th, yeah. Nice. So seeded April 20th, nice and early this year. And we would spray the, the rescue treatments like two days after the hail event, kind of mimicking the idea that if there was a real hail storm, you'd have to let it dry out and then get, on, get in there as soon as you can to spray the rescue product. So now we're, we're looking at our first plots. This is our, our checks, nice healthy looking crop. We're just gonna walk along if you don't mind with me. We would have a fusarium, uh, a Procero treatment as well. Actually, I thought I, I was picking out some interesting things right off the bat in these plots. Why don't you guys come in here and take a look and tell me if you see anything uh, weird. There, so this is 0% damage, right? No hail, this okay. is just pure out, pure crops. Procero. So we got a pretty nice clean flag leaf here. Yeah. yeah. How about over on this check plot? Not terrible, but what's that on that leaf there? Yeah. So we do have a striped rust starting to come in. I'll be honest though, given the level of infestation, don't expect any response whatsoever. The only other thing that I've noticed two years in a row now though, is when you're looking at this plot here versus here, do you see a difference? So it's a little bit higher. It's yeah. a little taller. Yeah, and that's two years in a row now I've seen that effect from, um, from Procero the fungicide. Now they are studying fungicides in Europe with growth promoting and growth regulating abilities. So there is some hormonal uh, things going on Eventually, I would like to study some of these properties in the hail event. So the idea then would be like some of these growth regulators you'll learn about over there will tell the plant, it says, you know, it has to do with ethylene production. Wait a minute, there's still lots of growing season left. Don't go to seed. And maybe you could sort of trick the plant into saying, you know, I know you had some stress, but let's keep going through this. So I think given the fact that I've been seeing these effects with even Procero on wheat, uh, even things like 2,4-D and auxins have, have different uh, growth regulator effects. So I think that, that's one thing. So far, our preliminary results are showing that it's only the early hail damage where we have a chance of rescuing it at all. So now we're going to get into the damage right here. So this was the earlier, earlier check. This was simulated hail on June 12th. So the growth, because it was seeded April 20th, growth stages were uh, a little bit beyond tillering, but now you get a sense of how, how well it's been able to recover. Mm -hmm. What is it now, June, July 20th? Yeah. So we're a month and month and eight days, but you can see the maturity effect uh, compared to the no-hail. That's the nice thing about having a simulator is that it allows us to study this in an even and replicated manner. So then this one would have had a fungicide on it. Visually, I, I don't know that there's Anything there? Our data from the first year of studies have shown perhaps a slight benefit only with that earliest hail damage. And then when we moved to the nutrient, we didn't honestly see any effect there. So that's a, that's the light damage June 12th. What was that nitrogen you put, put on there? We would have fertilized the entire area for, um, I think we were targeting 70 bushels of wheat here so everything got the same fertility so now we're moving to the heavier damage can you notice a difference in this crop versus the the earlier damage not a lot hey I was surprised by that myself so we literally beat this twice as hard as the first ones when we're when we're calibrating our damage we're, we're going on defoliation so sometimes I would go over it with uh, two passes with that machine and then on this one, we would try to do double. So we would go over it four times and we don't see uh, actually much more damage on that earlier stuff. And the data shows that as well is, and, and that's a little counterintuitive. You know, you get these hail adjusted reports. Oh, uh, I got 33% damage. Um, what that means to me in my payout. And then you get a 66. I mean, that, that sounds catastrophic. When it comes to taking these to yield, the level of damage isn't even close to as important as when the damage was. So that's kind of interesting. Some of the other interesting things that we've picked up is that the crops themselves have different tolerances to hail. 
Canola, for example, would you expect it to have a higher tolerance or a lower tolerance? Depends on the stage. Stage is most important. Let's say all the stages are the same. So I would say later it would probably come back better. Canola? Yeah. Okay. Any other guesses out there? Earlier. Yeah, early, early is, earlier is always the best chance. I mean, for one, it's pretty obvious you have more time and more weather uh, for it to recover. But as far as actual tolerance to the physical beating, canola is really tough. Mm -hmm. Even at the later stages, if I want to totally decimate a crop, 100% wipeout, we have to go over the canola probably twice as much as we would wheat. Huh. Whereas we move to the peas, peas are babies. You know, <laughs> you, you just slap a pea and it lays down and says, I'm dead. <laughs> and, and that shows up in the data as well, is that again, didn't matter if we hit it once or if we hit it twice, peas uh, cannot withstand hail. So I started thinking about, so we've never thought of different crops of different tolerances to hail. But if you say happen to be in a really high risk zone, that actually might be something to consider. Um, sometimes seeding really early, like we learned earlier with Brian today, is a really great thing. But what's the problem with seeding earlier? When, when do you normally get hail? Yeah, end of June, beginning of July kind of thing. So if you have an earlier seeded crop in a really high risk hail zone, then your, your, your plant is completely headed out and it's way more susceptible to hail than it would be at an earlier growth stage. So, you know, it, it's kind of conflicting information, but something to keep in mind if you happen to be in a high risk zone. Okay, let's move on to the next damage level. Zero. So we have a check for everyone. Mm -hmm. This is a split plot design because we want to keep the plots close to each other. Now, are we going to see any difference in our fungicide as far as leaf? This one looks pretty nice and clean. Yeah, I think we are seeing an effect. Actually, I wanted to ask you guys a question. I, I have my suspicions of what's going on, but... What do you think's happening with this plant? Sorry, I'll, I'll put it lower for you. I, need a <laughs> I know, I'm vertically challenged. That's my best guess too. Does anybody uh, can tell me exactly what, what is the hell is going on? Some kind of stress. Yeah. Yeah. You forgot to hear Probably. That's what you did. Is it water stress? I, I can't say positively. I'm pretty sure it's heat stress. Oh. So lots of times you'll see, even, and this is actually on the leaf. So this leaf is still wrapped around the stem, but we've had a lot of pretty hot days. Um, you'll, whenever you see banding, it's usually a stress at a certain growth stage and then you'll see it be, become green again. But anyways, that's a side note. So this is like the timing's mid? Mid timing then on this case would have been about two weeks later after the first one, so June, June 26th. Okay. So now that's six days short of a month. Now, 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 now what happens? Can you take a mental picture back in time when, you know, just 30 seconds ago when we looked at the other hail, and now look at this one. So that really shows visually what we're showing up in the damage, in the data, is that we should be less concerned with the extent of damage as much as when the damage is. Is there a chance for this to recover? Obviously not too much. Now the problem is, is what happens now is you've opened up the canopy, and then you go and spray some more nutrients on top. What do you think happens then? Get nice bushy weeds. Yeah. yeah. So if you come and look in here, you can actually see that the weeds have started to take off. There's more, um, isn't that crazy? Yeah. So whenever, you know, there's an opportunity, biology responds. So my thoughts are in the later stage to go in and spray a nutrient-based product and help fertilize the weeds. Now you've caused yourself more problem than good. So that's, you know, that's an actionable piece of information. The other issue that we have now, actually this is a neat one. So that's what happened, actually that's probably from the hail damage itself and now because of the restriction here we've got nutrient deficiencies there. So not a, quite a purpling in there. And that's why again with the hail machine we want to make sure we, we get all the different types of damage. So there's one other thing that happens with hail and opening up this canopy. Now we've got this, right? 
So, so the plant responds and it starts shooting out tillers. Now what's the issue with that? We learned about it this morning right before lunch. Which disease? Yeah. So now, now we've got this tillering issue. Why is it an issue with fusarium? Well, all we're doing now is expanding the window of which the heads are flowering. So instead of flowering in, a, say, a two-week period, we're now flowering for four weeks. So in that case, you know, interesting again why, whether a fusarium uh, fungicide treatment would work. I'm, I'm not too sure yet. We don't have enough data to really comment on that yet. However, we know that that's a problem. And, I, and having experienced this myself, you're like, ooh, should I chase this now? Should I chase these tillers? What do I do with this crop? When do I harvest it? And it really becomes a, a, a really tough thing. And you try to reach out for information on it, and there is none. You know, you talk to old, old, talk to old farmers. They're usually the best ones. Um, uh, they said, don't, don't chase the tillers. And because when, when you come back in a, in a couple of weeks, you're going to have all of the, the ones that haven't been damaged that are ready to go. And then you're going to have all of these green ones. So, so managing hail is, is tough because then that, all that does is translate into storage issues next. You may think you have saved yourself, but now you've got all these green kernels in, in the bins and then you cause storage issues. So it gets a little bit complex and, and really not a lot of hard information out there to deal with it and can be quite stressful. Which is also why I, I, I like the opportunity to generate some data on this because when people are in that you know, emotional state, there's kind of that Florence Nightingale effect. Oh, I'll do whatever I can to help it and rescue you. That's my five minute warning because I'm almost done. Any questions so far? So that, that was the light damage. And now we've gotten into the heavy damage. And you can see, I think in the heavier damage, there's actually even more tillering happening here, which, you know, this is sort of, is, it, is there any point in taking it as yield or, or do you just green feed it type idea? Um, if you're dealing with things like herbicide resistant management, those are other little factors that you should consider. When I did this, when I had hail on my own farm, I had a second flush of wild oats and it just so happened that those wild oats were resistant. So. Again, more factors why perhaps a silage or a green feed might be a better choice than trying to save that crop. Let's see, we got one more set of plots here on our late. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a really good point. Is Laura? Megan. Megan. There's a Laura too, right? There yeah. she is. That's her. <laughs> Both a couple of hippies. Are, yeah. Yeah. So Megan made the comment here that the late damage didn't actually look any worse than the early damage. And our data actually shows that as well. Yeah. Uh, remember I said the take home is stage, stage matters more than anything. So m there is a greater yield loss with the later damage, but it's not as big as gap as going from that early damage to the mid damage. That's only a week or two. And a week or two can make you 50% difference in yield. So if you've gone to that point, and it's not really calendar date, it's more about growth stage of the plant and, and is it susceptible to that hail damage at that stage. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna end it at that. Does anybody have any questions? I will ask you then to load back up and we're going to take you over to the next session and enjoy the rest of the day if I don't see you.